Hi, this is Bart Polson. This video is for Behavioral Science Statistics, and we're looking in this at Chapter 9 on t-tests and the first of four online quizzes in Canvas. The first question in this quiz is, which inferential test should be used to compare two sample means to each other? And the choices are a ratio of IQRs, or a one-sample t-test, or a one-sample z-test, or a two-sample t-test. The answer to this one is a two-sample t-test. Now, let's just take a look at the wrong answers. Uh, a ratio of IQRs interquartile ranges, I can imagine there might be situations where that would be relevant, but it's nothing that we're ever going to cover in this class. A one-sample t-test is for comparing one sample mean to a population mean when you don't have the population standard deviation. A one-sample z-test is for comparing one sample mean to a population mean when you do have the population standard deviation. The only one that allows you to compare two sample means to each other is the two-sample t-test. Here's the formula. You can see it. For instance, in the top here, we have x1, x bar 1, that's the mean for group 1, minus x bar 2, the mean for group 2. And we have other stuff in there. But this is the only one that allows you to put two sample means in. So this is the one you would want to use. Um, for comparing two sample means to each other. The second question is, the most important difference between Cohen's D and the t-test is that Cohen's D, A, requires the population variance, B, can only be used for large samples and greater than 30, C, is not affected by sample size, or D, can only be used for two group situations. The answer to this one is C, that Cohen's D is not affected by sample size. Now, these other ones requires the population variance. Well, you know, that's sort of a reference to the Z test, but that's, that's just not anything we need. Um, can only be used for large samples? Not at all. We often use it for small samples. Can only be used for two group situations? And actually, Cohen's D can be used in a lot of situations. We used it for the one sample Z test, the one sample T test, the repeated measures T test, and the two sample T test. Anyhow, let's look at... Uh, the effective sample size, really all you need to do is look at the two formulas. The t-test and the and Cohen's d have the same thing on the top. I'm using the one sample version in each case. We have the sample mean x bar minus the population mean mu. Uh, so the top, the numerator, is the same. It's the bottom that's different. In the t-test we have s sub x bar. That's the estimated standard error, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So sample size makes a difference to that one. It, it dramatically affects the standard error. On the other hand, on the right side with D, uh, the denominator is just S, the standard deviation, and it doesn't change according to sample size. So D, uh, Cohen's D, not affected by sample size, which is good for a generalized measure of effect size. On the other hand, for the t-test, where it is affected by sample size, that's good for an inferential test. So they each have their own purposes. Number three, what is the formula for the degrees of freedom, or the DF, for a two-sample t-test? The choices are n minus 1, or n minus k minus 1, or n minus 2, or the square root of n. The answer is C, n minus 2. Um, very briefly, n minus 1 shows up a lot when you're looking at the one-sample tests, or the... Uh, when you're calculating the uh, variance of the standard deviation for a sample, n minus k minus 1 shows up in a uh, something called the analysis of variance, which is in the next chapter. And the square root of n shows up a lot as a uh, part of the equation for the standard error. Um, anyhow, n minus 2 is the one. And let's take a look at how it gets there. Um, what you have here is, uh, the first line here is that df1, so that's the degrees of freedom for the first sample is simply n1, that's the sample size of the first one, minus 1. And the degrees of freedom df2 for the second sample is n2, that's the sample size for the second sample, minus 1. Fine. And so the df total, the total degrees of freedom, is simply those two degrees of freedom put together. So df1 plus df2. But you can also write it as n1 plus n2 uh, minus 2, because you're subtracting 1 from each of them. Or if you just add n1 and n2 together, then you have n total minus 2. And uh, on the answer to this one, I just put n minus 2 because without the subscript, it means altogether the, the total n. Anyhow, that's it to that one. Now, number four, if a researcher wants to compare the effects of an antidepressant to the effects of a placebo on levels of anxiety, then what is the independent variable, that is the IV? 
and the choices are level of anxiety or antidepressant medication or medication and then antidepressant versus placebo or two sample t tests. The answer here is the third one, medication and then colon antidepressant versus placebo. Now levels of anxiety is the dependent variable, it's the outcome variable. Antidepressant medication is simply one level within the independent variable. If you only have one level, that's not a variable because it's a constant, it's the same for everybody. So antidepressant is just part of the independent variable. And a two-sample t-test is just the inferential test that you would use to compare the scores. Um, let's take a look quickly here, a little bit of terminology. We'll see this one again. Little table here, on the left it has IV. In statistics that stands for independent variable. It's, um, it's the variable that in an experiment is manipulated. It's the one that you cause to be different. And the easiest way to think about it is the IV is the cause, the thing that is causing scores to be different for people in different groups. On the other hand, on the right column, we have the DV. That's the dependent variable. And it's called that because it's supposed to depend on the level or the factor that people are in in the independent variable. It um, is also the outcome variable, um, meaning it's, it's the thing that you're measuring as the, that happens as a result of the other things. And the easiest way to think of it is the DV is the effect. So we have a cause for the IV, an effect for the DV. Okay, number five. When the means of two groups are the same, then Cohen's D, A, will approach infinity or B cannot be calculated or C is equal to the combined sample sizes or D will equal zero. The answer here is D. Cohen's D, when the two means are the same, will equal zero. Um, will approach infinity, that happens if you're dealing, for instance, with logarithms and zero, it doesn't work. Uh, cannot be calculated? No, we can do it, even when they're identical. Uh, equal to the combined sample sizes? That's something I just threw in, that's, that's nothing. Um, again, look at the formula here. Cohen's D, in the two sample case, you have the mean of the first group, you subtract the mean of the second group. Well, if they're the same number, then, you know, a number minus itself is zero. And so Cohen, it doesn't even matter what's in the, uh, in the bottom part, because if zero is in the numerator, then the ratio D is zero always. Anyhow, that's the five questions in uh, the first quiz on Chapter 9 on T-Tests. Thanks.